Okay. Everybody name the first Christmas carol that comes to your mind. Go. Good job. Did anybody say joy to the world? So I want to tell you something about the Christmas carol that we all love so much, Joy to the World. Did you know that it was not written to be sung at Christmas? Did you know that it was actually not written about Jesus' birth? Hmm. So here's the story. In the 1700s, there was this young fellow, a teenager, whose name was Isaac, Isaac Watts. And he was very dissatisfied about uh, the singing in his church, the, the psalms they sang. He found that they were really, really um, lacking in meaning. He found the words really empty. And he must have complained about it a lot because one day his father got so tired of that that he told him, well then, young man, if you, why don't you write something better for us to sing? And at the age of 18, Isaac Watts took him up on the challenge and he began writing hymns. In fact, he became a prolific hymn writer for the church. 20 years later, still writing hymns, he was working on a collection of songs based on the Psalms of David, David's Psalms. And he came to Psalm 98. And there's some lines from it in the King James Version that go, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, and let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. And then the next lines are for he cometh to judge the world and the people with equity. And Isaac Watts interpreted this psalm as being a prophetic psalm about not the Jesus' first coming, but his returning, that his imminent return to earth to rule and reign as king. So in 1719, Isaac wrote Joy to the World as a hymn about the second coming of Jesus as king, never dreaming that one day millions of people would be singing it at Christmas time and it would be one of our best known Christmas carols. You know, for many people, this Christmas is not quite the same, it's lost some of its joy and sparkle. And while Christmas has always been a lonely time for some people, this year there are so many more people who are just feeling lonely. They're unable to come together with those that they would normally join together with, friends, family, parents, children, and loved ones. And they're just sensing this, that somehow there's not a lot of joy um, associated with this Christmas. Joy is just hard to muster up this year in the world. And, you know, even looking ahead, and even if the new vaccines that are coming out are effective in, um, and COVID is brought more or less under control soon, it seems like there's a feeling in our world today that we will never ever be, feel quite so safe, quite so innocently trusting of our world as we used to be pre-COVID. I think people have realized that this world can be a really scary place. The scary things can happen like, like a pandemic or a political or economic um, crisis that can turn everyone's lives upside down, just out of nowhere. It can literally transform our lives almost overnight. And, and almost overnight, everything we depended upon can be gone. Our health, our job, our, our finances, our security, gone overnight. But even in this year of 2020, at this Christmas, this sad, kind of scary Christmas of 2020, I just want to say there is joy to be had. There is joy for the world. And it is because the Lord came first and came as the Savior, came as the one to bring forgiveness, came as the one to make a way back into relationship with our God. But the real great, I think, great joy and, and hope in our, for our world is that Jesus is coming a second time. He is coming again as the king, the king of the world. He's coming again, and this time to right the wrongs and to fix our broken world, 
Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Isaac Watts wrote those words, picturing what it would be like when Jesus will have returned as the king. And so when he comes again, when he does, another line, no more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. When he comes, there'll be no more terrible pandemics, no more frightening illnesses, no more things that will overturn our, our lives. There will also be no more sorrows of injustice, sorrows of, of wrongs done. When Jesus comes to rule and reign, he will make, another line from the hymn, he will make his blessings flow as far as the curse is found to a dying world, cursed with pollution and global warming, wars and famines. Jesus will come and make his blessings reverse the curse. When he comes, he will rule the world. There will be no more despotic rulers, people who are ruling out of their power hungriness or their self-centeredness or just plain evilness. And where all of their people in their countries and all around the world pay for their megalomania. Jesus will rule, and he will rule with truth and grace and make the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. Jesus will reign with righteousness and love. So looking ahead, you know, even in this rough COVID Christmas, we can sing joy to the world at the top of our lungs. There is joy for the world as we look ahead because Jesus is coming back again. Merry Christmas and God bless you.